Well, both are progressing very rapidly, unfortunately, for the cardiovascular disease, unfortunately for the biomarkers. So on one, uh, on one hand, the, um, uh, we know from our uh, local uh, uh, studies that uh, patients with coronary artery disease uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the Arab world, particularly in the Gulf region, develop uh, the, the, this disease at very young age, almost a five to ten years younger than the patients in the, uh, in the Western countries because of the high prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, smoking, and obesity, which is among the, uh, and these rates are among the highest in the world. Unfortunately, the uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, in general uh, develop at much younger age and at much aggressive kind of form in our part of the, the world. Uh, however, uh, the good news is uh, we have better and more efficient way of diagnosing them. At the same time, uh, if we do a good job and at managing them, uh, the mortality rate and the morbidity and mortality rates are, uh, are low. So, and this has been shown both in the West and here in, the, uh, uh, in this part of the world, that uh, in some countries that have very good healthcare systems, even with these factors uh, causing disease to happen at younger age, uh, if you treat them, uh, diagnose them and treat them very early, you're more likely to impact prognosis and lower the mortality rate despite the high rate of cardiovascular risk factors and happening at early age. This symposium, like many others in the world, uh, but particularly uh, being held by, by Roche, and this, this symposium, like others have, that have been held by Roche, uh, in partnership with, the, um, uh, with doctors from the lab and doctors from the clinical field, basically uh, put uh, things together in terms of collaboration between industry doctors and uh, uh, doctors, whether people in the lab, technicians, and people who have PhD degrees in the, in the lab, or clinicians who treat patients uh, in the hospitals. So putting this forum together is, is great because it helps us basically understand each other and treat the patients uh, very efficiently. So. Coronary artery disease still hits a lot of people, and it's the most common cause of death internationally. Uh, but the good news is that we, ha we, we got much better and progressed much better in the last decade or so, particularly uh, in the level of early diagnosis, more accurate diagnosis, and more uh, efficient and uh, uh, prompt uh, diagnosis and management. Yeah, so uh, we have carried out many uh, real-life uh, registries in Saudi Arabia and in the Gulf region particularly. And I'm going to tell you now about uh, uh, another project that we're embarking on at the level of the Arab world for the first time that will be supported by Roche. Uh, the previous registries that we carried out in the last decade or so showed that uh, uh, patients with acute syndrome in the Gulf, and I'm talking about large registries, if we put them together over a, more than a decade, you're talking about more than 30,000 patients that re we recruited from different hospitals, different settings from the Gulf region in more than 10 years uh, in the Gulf region. And, uh, and basically, the lo this local data enriched our experience, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, patients present, present a much younger age to be more specific about risk factors, patients with acute current syndrome have a rate of diabetes of almost 60%, which is double to triple the rate of diabetes in the Western countries. Um, the other major findings that, uh, which basically highlights the need for primary prevention programs. Uh, it is one issue to develop a disease, but it's a, another, much, smart, much smarter from a healthcare point of view to prevent the disease from happening uh, and prevent even having risk factor, what's called primordial prevention. It's even before the primary prevention. So uh, not developing diabetes, not developing hypertension, not developing high cholesterol, uh, and obviously avoiding uh, bad lifestyle habits such as smoking and sedentary lifestyle. Um, 
the other major findings that um, uh, that we found that um, that patients with uh, acute heart failure, which is the other uh, part of the story, uh, as well, most of them develop heart failure because of myocardial infarction, because of heart attacks. Unlike other parts of the world in Africa, for example, where hypertension is the most common cause, uh, Chagas disease is a major issue of heart failure in South America and so on. But ischemic heart disease and coronary artery disease, heart attack is the major cause of, of, uh, uh, of heart failure in, in our part of the world. Um, so in order to solve, solve a major part of the, of the heart failure, you have to really address acute myocardial infarction and, uh, and uh, diagnose it promptly. And in this forum, uh, we've been discussing um, tests such as high sensitivity troponin, which is much more sensitive than the regular tr conventional troponin that basically diagnose MI at even as early as one hour uh, in, the, in the emergency. And you can safely send the patient home from the emergency uh, as early as one hour if the test uh, of the high sensitivity troponin is extremely low uh, in the rollout zone. Obviously, if it is in the roll-in, you need to admit the patient. If it is in the observation zone, you have to observe the patient, and maybe you can admit the patient or uh, have a very early follow-up. Uh, other local data, basically, uh, that we, we carried out in the last decade or so, uh, show that the use of emergency medical services is extremely low, both because probably patients do not utilize it properly, and on the, also probably the emergency medical system is not well developed, to be fair, and uh, to, to the public as well, because people find it much more efficient to just take their car and just go to the emergency, rather than calling an ambulance that might not arrive in time, that might not give you the prompt and very efficient Care. So, there's a great deal of care uh, of, of, an, uh, of an infrastructure for the emergency medical system that need to be developed uh, in order for people, for patients to trust uh, and the public to trust calling the emergency medical system, what's called the Hilal Ahmar or the, uh, uh, the Red Crescent. Um, we need to develop a very good acute coronary syndrome network between, patient, between hospitals that do not have cath labs and hospitals that do have cath labs because this network of transfer between these two types of hospitals are extremely important. Uh, again, to, to emphasize the point of efficient and very timely transfer. Uh, we have a slogan in cardiology that says time is muscle what we mean by muscle is the heart muscle. So you're racing against time when you transfer a patient. So when the patients get, de get delayed, you basically, with a heart attack or heart failure, you lose the patient, that patient could die within minutes to hours, uh, literally. Uh, so you need very rapid transfer, very uh, efficient emergency medical system. The last point that I would like to mention in reflecting to your question about how did our local data help us? Um, one of the other major findings that we, f we found is that um, women, women who develop heart attacks or heart failure come to the hospitals later than men. They do not seek medical attention as efficiently as men. They don't get treated efficiently compared to men. Um, and their prognosis is worse. Uh, so. And this is related to many reasons. One of them is that usually when women present, they usually present with heart disease at, the, at an older age. They might not seek medical attention uh, very promptly because their symptoms are kind of atypical uh, symptoms. They are not the classic compression in the chest. They might have jaw pain, uh, right-sided pain. Might not be the classic uh, symptoms, particularly many of them are elderly and diabetic, so their presentation is not very typical. And also in the medical system, doctors always look at women and those, they die because of cancers or breast cancer or what have you. This is another message that women, still heart disease is the most common cause of death in women, like men. Cancers are important, but still they are not number one. 
The other major issue in women that because of probably increased wealth in the Arabian Gulf region, many, and then the, this is going to real life, that many women started to smoke um, uh, as part of being able to buy more things, to, uh, it's nice to go outside and walk and so on, but many of them sit down outside in a cafes and start smoking which is becoming like a prestigious thing, uh, which is unfortunate because this basically um, uh, basically affect their health. And it's not really that prestigious to smoke in front of others in a cafe. Uh, it's nice to sit in a cafe and walk around, but not to coin that with, with bad lifestyle habits. So particularly among young women. So, uh, and this is extremely bad. Uh, and we know that when heart disease hit women for whatever reason, and this is not the field, the, the time for it to explore now, but they have much more aggressive disease. And um, as I mentioned, they're usually older and have diabetes and so on and have much have, have, have uh, low, worse prognosis. The other local data that we carried out, that we discovered that expats, minority, the, um, the, uh, those who uh, either immigrated to the Gulf or uh, or worked or, or basically coming here to do a job like manual workers and others, people who are not nationals who are living in the Gulf region. And I keep coming back to the Arabian Gulf region because most of the data that we carried out were in the, here in the Gulf countries. Uh, these people, we have evidence now that many of them have limited or poor access to excellent health care or very efficient care or life-saving care. Uh, like emergency, emergency angioplasty uh, to heart attack and so on. Uh, so I think we really have to look, and many of them are young men, men who just uh, from, the, from India, from Bangladesh and other uh, far eastern um, uh, uh, countries that are basically coming here to work. We really have to focus on this group as well and not only in the nationals because many of them have limited access to excellent care or, or efficient care, they might get the care but is not as efficient because of their eligibility to, to being treated in the hospital. It takes time to move them from one hospital care sector to another and that takes time. And as I mentioned before, with heart disease you're facing against time. If your system is not efficient, treating everybody, but particularly for those who have limited access, you're gonna lose people. Uh, and people die. Uh, so this is in a very quick summary the, 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 the local data that we carried on at the level of acute coronary syndrome or heart attack and heart failure in the, in the Arabian Gulf region. I have to finish by saying that uh, I'm working now on, um, on starting, well actually we started already the pilot phase of a study called Peace Mina Registry the Peace Mina Registry is a study that basically uh, registers all patients with acute myocardial infarction and acute heart failure in 15 Arab world countries, which has never been done before. I uh, would like to thank Roche for supporting the study. Uh, Roche will support also the, the um, diagnostic tests, the high sensitivity troponin and the pro-BMP uh, to the hospitals that do not have these tests in order to one uh, see and assess the utility of these tests in diagnosing, uh, in efficient diagnosis of these, uh, uh, of acute care syndrome and acute heart failure in, in, in the hospitals across the Arab world, and to really educate physicians on how to use them, because it's great to have technology. The question is, how do you really use them properly? Because if you do not know how to use them, it's like your phone or my phone. If you, you really can buy a, a very expensive phone, but and you're happy with it, but you're not really fully aware of how to use 80 or 90 percent of the functions inside, well, might as well not buy a, a, a very expensive phone, just, just go to the regular one. So it's better, it's something to have a great technology, that, uh, it's something else to have a very good um, uh, educational uh, program uh, that basically follow doctors and teach them and give them the exp hands-on experience of how to use these tests. So they are more likely uh, to translate that great evidence that we have in the literature into real life practice. 
uh, people are used to just conventional troponin, positive, negative. The things have changed now. Where high sensitivity troponin, where you have uh, uh, rule out zone, rule in zone, observe zone in these levels, it's not positive, negative anymore. Pro BMP is another thing uh, uh, in terms of the how, when do you do it in the emergency? How do you follow patients with heart failure uh, in in the ward or in the CCU? Uh, when do you repeat these tests? Do you, does it have a value before sending patients home uh, about doing pro BMP before diagnosing your heart failure uh, patient? We have evidence about that as well. So it's it's um, uh, the test is something, but on the other hand, using it proper, properly and to be cognizant of how do you really be wise on how to uh, use it in the proper setting uh, is, is another thing as well. Uh, you, because that can improve your patient prognosis if you use it properly, while it might confuse you if you do not know how to use it.